Wheelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory, a proud supporter of WQPT, has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Now providing live stream capabilities for viewing your loved one's funeral or memorial service at their chapel in Rock Island. Watching a billion dollar project grow and how it's leaving an impact on one city in the cities. It's a piece of history that dates back to the Great Depression. In 1935, the first span of the Interstate 74 bridge was completed. By 1959, the second span, with Iowa traffic heading into Illinois, was finished as well. But now, within two years, those two twin spans are scheduled to be gone. Just memories, replaced by a $1.2 billion state-of-the-art bridge carrying cars, bikes, and pedestrians. That's something no other interstate bridge can claim. Well, we've watched it grow since construction started in earnest in 2017. What can we expect over the winter and into the new year? We talked with the project manager, George Ryan, about the biggest construction project in the city's history. We want to talk about all the progress that you've made this summer, but let's talk about what's going on in the here and now, because you're still trying to finish up all the work on the Iowa-bound lanes. Okay, so in the here and now, as you said, there's a lot of work going on to finish up the Iowa-bound structure so that we can get traffic on that. We're confident that we can have traffic on that by the end of the year. So it's an exciting time. We're out pouring uh, thin overlays over some of the concrete decks. We have all concrete poured from bank to bank on the westbound side or Iowa-bound bridge, other than a couple small joints and some overlays that we're currently doing. We have a lot of finished work to do, a lot of barrier to put in, uh, you know, striping and, and a lot of miscellaneous things before we can open it. But we're in, we're in a good position and a lot of work has happened this summer towards opening that structure. Now what's interesting that we heard you say a little earlier was that you really want to get the Iowa bound side done, get traffic over there, because there's a lot of other work that you still have to do as far as the Illinois bound, of course. Correct. So, so as it relates to the Illinois bound, once we get the westbound traffic or Iowa bound traffic on the Iowa bound bridge, then we can tear out small pieces of the old Iowa bound bridge that will allow the new Illinois bound bridge to be expanded or actually the land work to be extend, expanded further. So it's a key, one of the key components of finishing and getting further along on the eastbound or Illinois bound side is to get the traffic on the Iowa bound side. Uh, originally or in the, the first phase we will put the Iowa bound traffic on the new Iowa, Iowa bound bridge. Then sometime by spring of 2021 we will put the traffic on the um, at the latest spring of 2021 we would put the Illinois bound traffic on the bridge with the Iowa bound traffic so that we can completely tear out the portions of the Illinois bridge that we need to tear out in order to construct the uh, land-based eastbound work in Iowa or Illinois bound work in Iowa. Which totally makes sense. I mean, now that we've gotten so used to this uh, uh, kind of this meandering route for detours, you get it. You get to understand what, what's going on. What's interesting about this bridge construction, and I don't have to tell you this, is the challenges that you have keeping Interstate 74, the old bridge, operating while building a new bridge at the same time, including all the detours, uh, the off-ramps and on-ramps in both uh, Bettendorf and Moline. Has that really slowed down this project? Because you've really had to kind of write out almost like a storybook how you were going to get this done. Right, so as you've so astutely pointed out, the, uh, the traffic staging for this project is very complicated but it was the way that the project could be compressed and it, it allowed work to be done at a faster pace so that we could build this and, and you know get everything done and turn it back over to the motorist. So it's went really well and the motorists have done an excellent job of avoiding the construction when they can and when they have to be in it, you know, they've been real careful and uh, I hope that they're listening to media outlets as well as social media. We do our best to keep everyone informed on the traffic, but the staging is very, very complex. 
and we changed a lot of the staging as uh, on the fly as we moved along once we enacted it to make it even better for the motorist. Tell me about this summer because it seems to have been a very good construction season for you and for everyone else, of course. The weather really cooperated for the most part. Yeah, it really has. You know, we had a lot of milestones coming into the summer. You know, we, we closed the arch in May. We did the uh, put the last piece of floor up in July, did the last um, last deck pour on the arch here uh, earlier this month. So we've had a lot of great milestones towards getting this done. At the same time, there was a huge amount of work done on the approaches coming to the arch. Some of the work on the approaches couldn't even be done until we closed the arch and got the stays and towers out of the way so that we could finish the approaches out to the arch. So you've seen a lot of activity on the job on the Iowa bound bridge and a little less activity on the Illinois bound bridge, but that's about to switch up as we get closer to putting traffic on the uh, Iowa bound bridge. Well, and we always talk about the arches and I want to talk about that in a moment, but the, the less sexy part of the construction really is the pouring of the concrete, the approaches, the on and off ramps. Uh, you've got to be pretty happy with how that has progressed this summer. Yes, yeah, so, so the land based work has also progressed very well this summer and you can see in Illinois that, you know, by the end of this construction season, they'll be pretty close to done with both eastbound and westbound lanes, all, you know, so all six through lanes, uh, with exception of just a few small areas that have to be staged. But that's been huge and you can see uh, on the Iowa side that we've completed a lot of work on uh, the eastbound lanes or the Illinois bound lanes uh, above where the viaduct is. We couldn't, we couldn't uh, work on the viaduct until we moved the Iowa bound traffic off of the old Iowa bound bridge. So that won't happen until, or at least the main work on it won't happen until sometime uh, later on this year or sometime early spring. Let's talk about the arches then, because that is the, uh, the, the pinnacle in so many different ways. As you said, the keystone for the Iowa bound was uh, set in May. Uh, people were always worried whether or not it was going to exactly match or if you're going to be off by inches or feet. How close were you? Were you almost close to perfect? Yeah, so, you know, the uh, and, and we've talked about this before, the building of that arch was a very precise operation, and we couldn't be more than 10 inches off when we got to the top, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get, get the keystone in. So each piece of that arch, as it was put on, was surveyed several times, and we made sure that it was where it was through steering and various tools, and that was crucial that when we got to the top, if we hadn't done that, there would have been a potential where we couldn't have put the top piece in and would have had to start over. Well, as it turned out, we were very close when we got there. We were able to close the arch, and that was all by design and by hard work and, and just making sure that each piece was where it needed to be as the arch came up. Right, that's why you guys are good at math in school and you carried it on. That's why, that's why you got to know geometry and algebra for any of the kids that are watching right now. And now you're repeating it all over again in so many different ways, but what's different with the Illinois bound lanes and the arch on the uh, eastbound uh, route is that you've now got the duplicates so close the Iowa side span, does that cause any extra problems? You know, the, the closeness of, of the distance between the new Iowa, Iowa bound bridge and the old Iowa bound bridge and the new Illinois bound bridge is certainly a concern. I mean, but it's something that the contractor is prepared to deal with. So it will make that construction a little trickier and we've had several discussions about it so it's not going to be an issue but it's a little different than the last one there were a lot of lessons learned on the westbound side and we've seen um, you know we've seen quicker construction so far on some of the eastbound side i think that will continue but there's some some uh, specialty things on on the eastbound or illinois bound structure that we'll have to deal with that we haven't learned yet because we haven't been through that learning curve, but we've certainly looked at the differences, had discussions about them, and the contractors prepared to deal with the differences. You're replacing, of course, what we're now referring to as the old I-74 bridge, which really, to be honest, isn't that old. I mean, one span was from the, what, 1932, is during the Depression, the other span at the end of the 1950s. Not really a very old structure. 
What makes you think that the new I-74 bridge is going to last much longer than this one did? Well, you know, when, when you look at the old structures, as a structure ages, it has more and more maintenance required to keep it going. And, and obviously the older structure, the one that was built in 32, requires a lot more maintenance than the new, newer. But a huge issue with both existing structures is the narrowness and no shoulders, the accidents and the potential for backups because of those, along with antiquated interchanges at each end that also were huge accident problems. So. We've talked about the narrowness of the old bridges before, but you know they're probably roughly 30 foot wide. Each new bridge is four lanes and 72 foot wide with full shoulders. So, so it's not only the maintenance and the age of the bridge and the and the things that have to happen, but a lot of the issue here is the narrowness of the existing structures. And you've said that you want this bridge, the new bridge, to last 100 years. Yes, the, the bridge has really been designed with some attributes that will make it last 100 years with minimal maintenance. So we would anticipate that it will certainly last longer, but the, everything, every component of design was designed in conjunction with trying to make it last and minimizing maintenance as much as possible. Matter of fact, there's a whole monitoring system that will allow just-in-time maintenance through the use of uh, data from the bridge, stresses and strains and movements. So that's been incorporated right into the job. That's one of the main factors for helping the bridge last 100 years with minimal maintenance. So get me through the winter and on into 2021. What's on the schedule and are we really following the timeline? Are we on schedule right now? Yeah, so, so we are following the timeline and as we've said, we've said for quite a while that we anticipate opening the, uh, the Iowa bound bridge by the end of this year and we're certainly on a timeline to do that. Um, we've said that the uh, Illinois bound bridge that we would like to see it open by the end of 2021. At this point in time, it appears that we're on a timeline to do that. And I think we would say, as we said on the westbound side, once we get the arch closed and we get the floor system up, we'll be in a much better position. But given what we've learned on the other side and where we sit today, we feel very confident that we're in a good position to make that happen, barring any huge issues with, you know, long-term floods or anything that could happen that, that uh, we couldn't foresee. So if we talk to you a year from now on this date, you'll be close to putting finishing touches on within a, within a, within a few months, I assume. We would hope so. I mean, if, if we're going to have it open by the end of 2021, then at this point in time, you know, we, we should have a very good idea. And I could say a lot more confidently that uh, that it would be open by the end of 2021. But it, everything's trending that way. Everything at this point in time looks good for that type, that uh, time frame of an opening. Interstate 74 corridor project manager George Ryan. In a moment, one city that's growing just as fast as the bridge itself. A unique partnership still ahead on the cities. But first, what can you do to get out of the house in the coming days? Well, here's Laura Adams with a taste of what you'll find if you do go out and about. This is Out and About through October 16th. Join WQPT at the Bluegrass Drive-In for a screening of The Age of Nature, October 8th at 7. RSVP at wqpt.org forward slash nature. Register at figgyartmuseum.org to hear from artists involved in the Living Proof exhibit. Or join the concert series at Schwiebert Park, the first at 7 o'clock. The Black Box Theater presents three viewings October 1st through 3rd, while Gigi's Playhouse is having a virtual superhero run for Down Syndrome on the 3rd. Butterworth Center honors 100 years of women's voting rights with a performance by Laura Keyes as Elizabeth Cady Stanton on the 4th at 3. Iron Invasion 2020, a fundraiser for Helping Hannah's Heart Foundation, includes classic cars October 9th through 11th at the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds. This year's NAMI Walks is going virtual. Visit NAMI walks.org to register for the October 10th walk or register for a virtual trivia night for the second Jason Blair Roberts Memorial Scholarship fundraiser October 
11th at 5. Reserve your space to paint Pumpkin Paws on the 16th at 6.30 at the Coffee Hound in Bettendorf, and the Putnam Museum host a virtual Mad Scientist Ball. Make your reservation for the October 16th event. Pete's Humane Race, Real or Virtual, is coming October 10th. Registration deadline is the 4th. For more information, visit WQPT.org. We want to congratulate musician Mo Carter, who is celebrating her 10th wedding anniversary this month. A few months ago, she sang about another man when she took to the stage of Moline's Black Box Theater. So here's one of her originals, Mo Carter with Hardware Man. Mo Carter, with Hardware Man, performed at downtown Moline's Black Box Theater. Two of the cities are seeing an explosive growth in their downtowns, thanks in part to construction of the new Interstate 74 bridge. Moline is rethinking its entire downtown, thanks to the huge footprint that will be left behind after the old bridge is dismantled. 
The same in Bettendorf, where a drive through downtown in a sleepy bedroom community is fast becoming a new destination point in the cities. The downtown Bettendorf organization was created to make the most of those opportunities, and we talked with the head of the organization, Ryan Jancy. Well, Ryan, behind you is this massive construction project, $1.2 billion on an Interstate 74 bridge. Not only is it transforming Interstate 74, but it really is transforming both Moline and downtown Bettendorf. Well, what it's doing is uh, we're going to brand Bettendorf and the I-74 corridor as the gateway into the Quad Cities. What we're excited about is start capturing some of that activity and some of those visitors that come into our downtown. We're going to have a new uh, elevator that's going to take you up to the walking path or the bike path that goes across the bridge. And when those visitors stop down here, we want to make sure that we're able to attract them into our downtown. Whether that be the walkability, um, the beautification efforts, the urban park that's happening underneath the bridge. Just a whole gamut of things we want to do to be a part of this renaissance that's happening in downtown Bettendorf. An absolutely right word is renaissance. I mean, you think of the uh, Center Credit Union headquarters, you think of the, the bridges uh, building, you've got the, uh, uh, the new office building near that. Is that really all pretty much because of the investment from the bridge, which has now transformed into also an investment in downtown Bettendorf? Most definitely. What we're seeing is we're going to see a lot easy of a trans transition between Bettendorf and Illinois, Moline and Illinois, if you will, uh, whether it be employees, whether it be visitors. Um, commercial properties are starting to sniff around a little bit because they're going to see this ease of transition between Iowa and Illinois. We're going to be able to attract customers over here. It's not going to be an issue with traffic anymore. Um, we're going to see more development as we see the old bridge go away on the west side of downtown. Again, we want to foster that walkability, foster this beautiful river we have behind us and make sure that's a part of our development and a part of our attraction of downtown Bettendorf. We have talked a lot about what Moline's planning on doing. I believe it's 12 acres of land once the old bridge goes away. They're talking about mixed use. They're talking about uh, uh, public space. What is Bettendorf looking for that area where the old bridge exists now once that goes away in what, 2022, 2023? Correct. Well, well, the biggest excitement is the urban bridge that's going to be underneath the park. That's going to create connectivity to the north side of our downtown, up by what I used to call Rocket Park, which is Meyer Park. That connects to the houses and to the, and to the residential neighborhood. That's going to allow them to walk to our downtown. And then the east-west side of that connectivity is really going to join that around and see some more development again on, that, on the west side of the bridge. Um, we've had some interest in, in the former Village Inn area. We do have a new brewery on that side of town that's just getting started. Um, and again, we've taken part in a housing study down here that shows that the market is able to support up to 376 market rate um, apartments or multi-residential, if you will. So we're going to see some more tire kicking and some more development down here. And that's really what we want to see down here. Um, a downtown thrives on businesses, people living, working down here, people living down here, and people coming to visit and play down here. And so we want to start putting a flag on, on all those different type of aspects of downtown and making, making sure that we're addressing uh, everyone's needs. Well, and it's really kind of interesting that we're talking this way because when the interstate system was designed in the 50s and the 60s, so many communities actually died because it steered traffic away from them, of course. Now you've got a major interstate bridge that's being built, and you're looking for a way to link to it, actually grow because of it, um, and, and to make the most out of all that concrete that's above your head. Correct, correct. I mean, the, the bridge is economic development. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. In the past, we experienced uh, a little bit of slowing down here because of the prospect of the construction, right? Um, at one point, it was 10, 15, possibly 20 years of construction down here. Um, it was hard to attract businesses down here when they knew that, uh, that there was going to be road closures and things like that. We are starting to come to the other side of it. A lot of the work above us is done. A lot of the street alignment in downtown Davenport is done. And now we get to start adding the flavor of it, if you will, with the beautification efforts and the, and the urban park and the walkability and the traffic, cal traffic calming efforts to make downtown Bettendorf a destination rather than a, just a simple drive through. I was going to ask you, because most of the work, most of the concrete poured in Bettendorf for State and Grant Streets, that really is virtually done right now. What more has to be done other than the removal of the old bridge? Well, that, that's pretty much it. Again, uh, you're going to see cont a continuation of the construction happening down here, but that's going to be off the roads, right? That's going to be the construction of our urban park. Uh, the bridge coming down will go down a lot faster than the new one coming up, so that's going to happen before we know it. So we are excited for that. We want to start 
getting the word out here that uh, we're here, we're open for business, and we want to start attracting some more uh, commercial type of businesses, whether that be retail. Um, we are a home improvement corridor down here, so we've been kind of hanging our head on that. But again, we want to get to that walkability, that well-lit, you know, uh, more events down here. We're going to see more of that. Um, the, the city of Bettendorf has invested in uh, some parking lots down here that are going to help uh, with, with traffic, obviously, and people having a place to park, get out of your car and walk around our downtown and just experience things that are, that are happening in here and, and the future that's about to come. Yeah, those, those people who have lived in the Quad Cities for a while know that Bettendorf used to be just a place that the downtown you just drove through, and now there's reasons to stop. Um, it's, it's, it's a far more inviting area. Let me talk about another problem that you guys have been facing downtown. Of course, everyone's facing is the COVID-19. How is, how is downtown Bettendorf dealing with the pandemic? And, and do you see some of these local businesses at least adapting and coping with the, uh, I hate saying the new normal, but basically that's what it is right now. Yeah, I mean, we're Midwesterners, right? And so we're able to adapt and overcome uh, to the best of our abilities. Um, but what we are seeing is, again, we are a home improvement corridor down here. So if one thing has probably come out of the COVID, you're seeing some people investing in their homes again, maybe doing uh, remodeling their kitchen or, or, uh, or remodeling their living room. Um, so we have plenty of interior decorators down here. We have kitchen and bath design. Uh, we have K&K, &K, who has been a staple for downtown. Um, so for the most part, we've been able to weather that storm. Uh, our restaurants ha have been able to, uh, you know, work with the with the to-go orders, uh, some patio seating, and and it has affected them. Um, but we're still seeing, you know, the resilience of our of our property owners and our business owners down here uh, to make the best of of the situation we're in. And uh, we are going to come out of it. You know, we're confident of that, and uh, we're looking forward to the future of downtown Bettendorf. And and, and again, enticing more retail, more commercial, and more living and working and uh, playing in downtown Bettendorf. As a downtown developer, I mean, you're looking at the other side of the wormhole as far as COVID-19 is concerned, and people are rethinking office space and how businesses and offices are going to be run. I know you have a major office building that's being constructed right now. Is that something that you look at for the future, like 10 years from now, will you need that much office space? Yeah, I, I think you're going to see some people steer away from that. Um, with the office space we have down here, again, is uh, banks and lenders are making their home office down here. So I think people still like to have that face-to-face, -face, right, with that, with that person that may be lending them the money or the person that they are lending the money to. So we're going to continue to see that. What we do have down here also is, is the river, you know. So um, if you are um, being asked to work out of your office, you're going to have a great view of the river, right, and you're going to have that ease of transition uh, of transportation across the river. It's not going to be an issue with traffic anymore. Um, and so, again, I think, um, you know, the sky's the limit. I think, we're again, we are going to turn the corner on this covid um, eventually, and uh, you're going to still see people working in their offices and working in downtown Bettendorf. Ryan Jancy, head of the Downtown Bettendorf Organization. Well, there's a new exciting feature we're happy to tell you about here at WQPT. Your local PBS station is now live streaming local broadcasts like the cities. In order to watch, click on Live TV on the upper right corner of our website. Anyone in our coverage area can now take WQPT any place at any time. Get more details at WQPT.org. On the air, on the radio, on the web, on your mobile device, and now streaming on your computer. Thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. Whelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory, a proud supporter of WQPT, has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Now providing live stream capabilities for viewing your loved one's funeral or memorial service at their chapel in Rock Island.